Time for another Indomitus conversion video and in today's video we're going to convert the Necron Royal Warden and it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you, I feel like I'm out of breath for that. Let's start again. then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. So continuing on from my previous episode where I converted the Overlord from the Indomitus box set, well today's video is going to be the Royal Warden's turn. However, the Royal Warden is slightly different because he's holding his gun with two hands and that makes the conversion for a push fit model a little bit trickier. So tricky that actually I had to change my plan as I was doing the conversion, which you'll see in a minute. However, I'm keeping it in the video because when I want you to see that whilst you're doing your conversion, you sometimes have to run with what happens to the miniature as you're doing it. And actually, you can use the things that go wrong to your advantage and come up with a very cool looking conversion. So, let's go table down and have a look at the conversion. Okay, so here is the Royal Warden and what an awesome looking miniature he is. I really like him. However, if you have two of these in your army, well, you don't want them looking exactly the same. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and change the pose of this guy. Now, because he has the gun in both hands, I think it's gonna be quite awkward to do too much with it, but I'm thinking if we can angle the gun so that it's more upright, that will change the pose a bit. And then I'm thinking if we rotate this miniature at the waist, it will also change the pose quite a bit. So the wires of the gun here are attached to the back and that's going to limit us rotating him to the right hand side. We're going to have to rotate him to the left, but I think that will work quite well where his leg is standing up on this rock here. However, before we can do this, what we have to do is clip all the pieces off of the sprue and clean up all the mould lines. Okay, so here are the pieces all ready to go. We're going to start off with the body and we're going to basically cut the spine in one of the joints, allowing us to pin and rotate this body section. Now, if you lie this flat on the table and try to cut it with a knife, you might bend some of the plastic and it's a bit fragile. So what I'm going to do is use my little paint pot with some blue tack on and this will take the pressure of some of the uh, plastic and then we're going to get our knife we're going to get it into the groove and without damaging any of the other plastic we are going to gently put some pressure and wiggle this knife if you use a sharp blade it is easier but of course mind your fingers with a new sharp blade and just gradually push this down and eventually it will go right the way through the plastic. As I said, just go careful with this. There we go. A perfect cut. Right, next up we are going to drill a one millimeter hole into that side and into this side. And we're going to use a little paper clip and make a little pin. Okay, so I just cleaned the joint up slightly and now we're ready to drill a hole. I'm going to use my pin vise here, which I got from Games Workshop, and a one millimeter drill piece. And I'm going to find the center of this section here and just gently drill out a hole. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. Okay, so that's a hole drilled in both sides. I've also cut up a paper clip into a little metal rod and I'm going to super glue it into the leg section just into there and then once it's dry I'm going to clip it down so that it fits into the other half and we get a nice join however I'm going to let this dry first before we clip it put that in and leave that to dry Okay, so that's now dry, so I'm going to take my little clippers and just clip this little wire down. And there we go, so hopefully now this should be 
just about the right length. If not, we can clip it down a little bit more, which we need to do. So just clip that down. And hopefully now it's going to sit flush. Perfect. So we can now rotate this body, but before we actually glue the other side, we're going to do the rest of the conversion so we can make sure that the wires don't hit anything that they shouldn't. But staying on this section, I'm going to go down to the rock that this guy's standing on. I'm going to keep the rock, but I'm going to remove the little skull. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this section here, which is from the Overlord's base. For the conversion that we did on the Overlord, we took this rock off. So I'm going to put this rock on this base. Then I'm thinking this skull here, I'll probably put on the Plasmancer conversion when we do that in the next video. Okay, so that's done and I've loosely put it onto the base for now. I cut the skull off and this little Overlord section is going to fit very nicely at the back of that rock just to make it look a little bit different as well. So that's that section done. I've also gone into the top half and I've glued the two pieces together at the back here. So this cape section and also these wires just here, all glued in, ready to go. And the next thing we're going to do is the gun arm, which of course is where the next conversion piece is going to come in. Now, looking at the joints here, they're actually shaped to fit exactly into the hole. So we obviously need a different uh, fitting rather than this fixed joint. So we are going to clip off the little nodule which comes out, which is the shaped section. We're going to clip them off and we're going to use our knife and just trim them down on both sides. So effectively we've just got a little ball joint so that when we put it together we're going to be able to move these pieces. Okay so I've done that and I positioned these two arms into the miniature and well I had a bit of an issue to be honest and I've actually come up with a plan B but just going back to what the issue was looking at the original miniature again well the issue is basically this wire which is attached to the back and the gun and then on this side the cape which again is attached to the back and the arm so when you move these two arms upwards it's almost impossible to get these wires to match up even with a little bit of bending because on this side you've also got this cape which is in two pieces and again it just doesn't really work, it doesn't match up. I mean, you could potentially try and cut the cape off of the back, but then even then it's gonna be very difficult to re-angle it so that it attaches to the back as well. So this here causing me problems. So I did come up with a plan B and this is it. I basically glued this body on, but I angled it upwards rather than straight up. So you can see, the difference there and of course I rotated it round as well. So I glued it onto the metal pin with some super glue and I just held it sort of over to one side. Of course it left a gap where I was pushing it over so I filled that gap. Hopefully you can see it. I just filled it in with some green stuff. I've got a video on how to use green stuff which I'll link you up in the description below. But uh, yeah, filled that in with green stuff and that's given me a slightly different pose. It's not as extreme as my original vision was with the gun angled differently but it will be angled slightly differently and of course his body and legs are going to be different as well. So my next task is going to be to glue these arms and guns into position and then lastly I can work on the head. Okay so that's his arms all glued together and it does look quite different actually from the original especially on this area where it's sort of angled to one side you get more of a sort of flowing effect of that little cape which looks pretty cool and what I've also done is I've angled his head over to one side of course it's left a gap here so I'm going to fill that with green stuff but that is the conversion done. Okay so his head is on it's angled slightly and I filled in the little gap with green stuff plus when I glued him to the base I was able to enhance the pose 
even more by pushing his left leg forward so that it's flat on the ground rather than just being slightly back on his toes and that just pushed the gun upright a little bit more. I'm really liking this pose, I think he looks really cool in that position. The difference between the two isn't really dramatic, but for a guy holding a two-handed weapon, I think we've done a good job. Even looking at his cape there where it's attached to the arm, where I've angled the model, that cape is in a totally different position as well. So yeah, you can see the differences and I'm happy with him. And of course, let me know what you think of him in the comments box below. And if you want to see my Overlord conversion from the Adomitus box set, then there is that video. And here are some other conversion videos which I'm sure you would enjoy. Beam me up!